Okay, so now we're going to do the last do now from week three. So if we go straight to the question, it says, which of the following would most clearly strengthen scientist one hypothesis? So now we have to go back to scientist one. Scientist one says, according to the quark model, each proton consists of three quarks, two up quarks, which carry a plus two thirds and one down. So that means that each proton is two thirds plus two thirds minus one third. All mesons, one of which is the P plus particle, are composed of one quark and one anti-quark. And all baryons, one of which is the proton, are composed of three quarks. The quark model explains the numerous different types of mesons that have been observed. It also successfully predicted the essential properties of the Y meson. Individual quarks have not been observed because they are absolutely confined within baryons and mesons. However, the results of the deep and elastic scattering experiments indicate that the proton has a substructure. In these experiments, high energy electron beams were fired into protons. While most of the electrons incident on the proton passed right through, a few bounced back. The number of electrons scattered through large angles indicated that there are three distinct lumps within the proton. So this is a whole lot of words. This passage is really just trying to confuse you. But scientist one agrees with the quark model. Um, and that says baryons and mesons are both made of quarks, but you can't observe quarks. Um, and then scientist two, if you read through this, says that <clears throat> quarks should be easy to distinguish. So if a particle with fractional charge, so a charge that's not quite an integer, was detected, that would strengthen scientist one because that means that you see these bumps, which you see these quark models. So we need to find something that is a detection where it has um, a fraction because that way you're not actually seeing the quark, but you are um, seeing that there's a fractional charge and the, so the answer there is G. 35. Which of the following are reasons why scientist two claims quarks should have been detected? So, if they existed, you can scatter the experiment, or you can scatter them to split the proton, and then you can see them. So that would be the Millikan oil drop experiment. Um, the lightest quark would be stable because there's no lighter particle for it to decay. They'd be easy to produce, identify, and store and it violates the Pauli exclusion principle, which is something you guys just learned about in class. The Pauli exclusion principle says that no two particles of half integer spin can be there. That's why we draw our electrons like this. So which of the following are reasons why they claim? So if we go through these, they have a unique charge. They are confined within mesons and baryons. That's something that scientist one says right in here, so we know that's wrong. And they're supposedly fundamental particles and so could not decay. So here, because there's no lighter particle for it to decay to, we know three is an option. They have a unique charge um, because they would be the only particles that carry fractional charge right there. So the answer is C, one, and three. All right, 36. Which of the following could scientist one use to counter scientist two's point? about the Pauli exclusion principle. So he's saying that the particles don't follow this rule where the um, half integer spins have to be the other way. So um, that means that scientist one says that you can have particles that do have a plus two charge. So the answer here is going to be G. No, it's not. Um, the answer here is going to be F. Sorry. So the answer here is the evidence that quarks do not have a half integer spin. And the reason that this one um, would be correct, because if it shows that they don't have a spin, then this doesn't matter in the first place. So like if you're sitting on the bus, two people can be sitting on the bus holding hands and that's fine because two people don't have a half integer spin. And so you don't even have to worry about the Pauli exclusion principle. But for an electron that does have a half integer spin, you do. So the answer here is F. Um, the plus plus baryon exists. That would be the second best answer. 
but that's not going to be your answer there um, because this is just two quarks in the same state. All right, if scientist one's hypothesis is correct, the plus plus baryon should have a charge of. So scientist two says that this baryon has three quarks. So um, each up quark, these two, would have a charge of two thirds. So the three quarks together, and this is all positive, would have another charge of two thirds, two thirds, two thirds. So that makes it choice D. 38. So the answer for 38, scientist two says the quark model is flawed because the existence of individual baryons cannot be experimentally verified. Um, the existence of individual quarks cannot be experimentally verified. Particles cannot have fractional charge, and it doesn't include electrons as elementary particles. The answer to this question is G, and that's just straight from the passage if you go back to it. All right, 39. <laughs> Um, 39 says, scientist one that says that some high energy electrons were aimed into the proton in the deep inelastic scattering experiments. <laughs> Bounced back because they hit quarks, hit other electrons, were repelled by positive charge, or hit baryons. The answer to this question is A, which you can also find just right back in the passage um, where it talks about the scattering experiment. And the last question, 40. The fact that deep inelastic scattering experiments revealed a proton substructure of the three lumps supports the quark model because. So that means that you have three different lumps that have three different charges, and you could detect them. Um, the answer here is H, uh, because it said protons are baryons. That's a quote directly from the passage in Scientist 1, and baryons consist of three quarks. Also a quote directly from the passage.